Journals come in many forms, some less harmful, like your pickpockets or your public nudists. Then you have the arsonists or the racketeers. Some of these make headlines, but there's one type of crime that nobody ignores. Murder. It's the crime to which there is no reversing the damage. Vandalism can be repaired, stolen things returned, but a life once taken stays gone. The scariest part is how many different kind of murderers there are. There's those that do it in the heat of passion, others for mercenary purposes, still some for revenge, myriad of other reasons, but one stands out as most bewildering to normal people. Desire to kill. Something beyond bloodlust in battle, something forged deep in the psyche of the offender. These individuals end life because doing so fulfills a basic need in their brain, and they are the most dangerous of all. The ultimate addicts with the worst kind of fix. But. What if one of these addicts had their focus trained in a way that benefits society? Say, if they only went after other murderers? Well then, you'd have the conundrum that is Showtime's Dexter. Debuting in 2006, this series caught everyone off guard. It near boasted about its serial killer protagonist, but after watching a couple of episodes, people seemed to like the man. Two reasons could be behind this. He only targets people that got away with murder, and he's actually a human being. I could spend the entire review talking about Dexter's development, as well as half the other cast members, but instead, I'll sum up with this. If you enjoy character pieces, Dexter is right up your alley. So, back on point. How does a series dedicated to exploring the mind of a serial killer involve sociology? By chance. In the second season, Dexter's dump site is discovered by divers delving into the deep for doubloons. When the FBI investigator finds that all the victims were convicted or at least suspected murderers, it sparks debate among everyone in and around Dexter's life. It's like the credit sequence of the Boondock Saints, but over a full season of television instead. What does Miami learn from the Bay Harbor Butcher? Let's dive into season two and find out. Miami is overrun with rumors at the discovery of Dexter's devious distractions and reacts accordingly with panic. Some act violently against others, those with missing loved ones flock to the police station, and pundits pounce on the buzz topic. Andy Ramos to provide insight into the Bay Harbor Butcher, evil serial killer, or avenging force for good. Because there's only two sides to everything. That's a time-honored American tradition. The two sides only thing has been around since good and evil, or us and them, but the United States goes the extra mile in this. We have two major political parties that take mirrored stances on all issues, and an economy that either thrives strong or totally dies without middle ground. No wonder the rest of the world has issues with us. We're bipolar. The people in Dexter's Miami are true Americans because they're just as split on the issue. The criminals, I say leave him alone. He's got my seal of approval. I hope they catch him today. And I'm not a violent person, but I hope they hurt him. Give him a quarter off as a company car and all the ammunition he wow. needs. At That's kind of nuts. So, who's in the right on this? Is there an ultimate judge that can decide? I'm not sure on that, but sociology says they both have their points. Dexter is not a sponsored force that acts in accordance with laws mandated by the people. He's a single man that tracks those that meet his criteria and ends their lives. He's only human, despite his actions, and all human beings are prone to errors. When dealing with capital punishment, avoiding mistakes is wise. The way that he goes around killing people who violate the law, he's bound to inspire copycats, perhaps some with less strict definitions over which crimes are worth killing someone over. And that's no bueno. <laughs> so with all those downsides, what could possibly be the positive spin for Dexter? I didn't do it to save lives, but save lives I did preserves innocent lives. Despite how often Dexter claims to feel nothing, seriously, if you took a shot every time he said that, you'd be drunk 15 minutes into each episode, he is hyper aware of the loss others experience. When he sees that great pain in someone else, it drives him to seek out whoever caused it. Killing people that got away with murder is mathematically sound, because that would decrease the total amount of homicides. See, in this instance, the police discover 18 bodies down there. But these 18 killers would have generated at least 18 more bodies, if not more, before the police could have convicted them. That's enough evidence to convince some people that what Dexter's doing is just. On the face of it, the Bay Harbor Butcher is acting for the common good, preventing people who commit the most heinous crime from repeating that offense. What's the problem with that? You don't kill this many people because it's a chore. You do it because you like it. Oh, yeah, that. There's some darkness to Dexter, yeah, and... 
He's not even sure how to control it all of the time, which is a problem. But here's the thing. He's always drawn between this light and dark, this following of his father's code that makes sure he doesn't get caught for murder because he's murdering murderers, and this darkness just compels him to kill. And I tell you, the romantic arcs in Season 2 help outline this better than anything. Meet Rita Bennett, Dexter's girlfriend and best cover. She has no idea who he really is, but trusts him implicitly. Then, a choice named Lila appears, and she draws Dexter into turmoil. To further discuss this tormenting choice for the character, let's go to the master of manipulating these kind of events. So, you come across the data you need. Unfortunately, it is locked and encrypted. What do you do? Oh, I call tech support. Tech support? Yeah, they help with stuff like this all the time. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. Bacchus. Maybe I can dig through the files nearby and find a password. Bacchus. Oh, I'll call the police. Ba ba Bacchus. What? You're the Decker. Yeah, so? Oh, oh, right, right. I probably know someone that can work around that block. I'll call him. Mind if I intrude? Please do. Explain what Lila represents in the second season of Dexter. Do, do, do you mean besides being Dexter's creepiest fan? Because that's, that's kind of an accomplishment. Yeah. How does she drive the story? Dexter, after the world begins chasing him, has a couple of huge choices to make. And Lila is perhaps the biggest problem. She's an addict that's attracted to the darkness in life. Like pain, misery, and death. In short, she's crazy and really dangerous to someone like Dexter. She's the dangerous one. Dude, she destroys and manipulates on a whim. She's a rule breaker and, well, you know, the only thing that keeps Dexter from killing anyone he wants is... The code. And what happens when you take the targeting protocols away from a killing machine? Massive casualties on all sides. Rita is the paragon. Follow the rules. Be a productive member of society. Get along with everybody. Lila is the dark renegade. More fun, but there's more bodies involved. Lila may be alright with Dexter's murderous ways, but she's the path of total chaos. If he chooses her over Rita, Dexter's giving up the cover he needs to kill people for many years to come. So clearly, he should have gone with Lila. What? No, wait, you just said- Then he'd be caught, yes. You should be. Why? Off the top of my head, he's a serial killer! God, where's with the fans of this show? How do you always gloss over that fact? Uh, thanks for the editorial, DM. He kills people! God, why is he the hero? Wait, wait, I got it. Oh I was a decker. So, so wait, wait, I can try to hack through the block. Yes, Bacchus. That was the plan the entire time. Alright, awesome! How do I hack? Do I need to axe? I understand his urges now. All of Dexter's urges. Yes, Bacchus. I have an axe right here. Oh, can you hear me? I'll give it to you! His darkness is well illustrated by Lila's attraction, but she does more than just relate to it. She helps and name you it. belong to it. To this... Dark passenger. Yes. A prominent part of the Dexter mythos, the Dark Passenger makes its first appearance in this season, which is strange because it's central to how his brain is wired. Hold up, hold up, hold up! Oh, there he is. All right, the Kevin is here. We can continue to know a science lecture. What? What was a uh, Spaniard? Remind me of the notes. Um, Dexter's Dark Passenger? Well, and here I thought you was going to be another silo, claiming to be allergic to your sign reading and the homework. <laughs> anyway, the Dark Passenger. The result of personality dissonance, Dexter's dark demeanor demonstrates the destructive deeds he desires to display. There's a lot that goes into the reason he made his hobby, cutting people up into hefty bag-sized pieces. At the center of all is his dark passenger. You see, class, on the one hand, you got the Dexter, who wants to be the good, healthy, productive member of society. Uh... And the other hand, you got the dark passenger, who wants to murder and maim and kill. See how they're separate? What were you doing? Sorry about that. Yeah, I was uh, teaching some uh, advanced surgical courses to my new residents. You know, eight degrees and all. Uh, really good to hassle to fit all, the, fit all them classes in, fit the surgeries in, fit the teaching in. But then I realized I have a time machine, in, and, and it's really easy. Also get number nine. But anyway, this passenger was Dexter's way of distancing himself from the blame for his actions. Where he always knows that he's the one person, yo, he pushed the drive for his urge to kill into another identity. That way he can claim himself to be the victim of the mind of this condition that he had since childhood. Without this dark passenger, he may not have so easily accepted his father's code. What's his mental partition have to do with the code? It's like, we get, we got the kid who's all like, I was all good and happy because my parents keep telling me I was all good and happy. He thinks, ain't no way I could have dark urges like that. 
But then when his stepfather comes along and he says, he's like, boy, something deep and dark got into you and it's real bad. He's like, it must be the dark passenger. He's the evil one. Ballast for his guilt. That right, makes sense. It's kind of strange the writers took so long to introduce it. It's very telling. Thanks for the contribution, Kelvin. Contributing is my lecture. No, actually, you're in my review. It is. What the? Oh. You didn't come to think of it? I should probably get back to that bypass. At least more anesthetic. Nurse! Wait, you left in the middle of an operation? Oh, calm down. It's just an intro. Doctor, please, I seem to be bleeding to death at an alarming rate. I know, I know. Keep your silly hat on. So the only thing that keeps the Dark Passenger in line is the code. That tenuous balance is all that stops the Bay Harbor Butcher from offing whoever irks him at the moment. So why is he still viewed as a good guy by fans when he could snap at any moment? Because despite his own damages, he manages to do something bad in the best way possible. He's as flawed as human beings come, indulging in his addiction on a nightly basis and hurting others in the process. But the way he commits these horrific acts is beneficial to society at large because he's removing people as dangerous as he is. He is a bad, bad man, and the world has made a better place through his self-indulgence. It's a Zen riddle. Dexter represents the middle ground that no one wants to touch, and that's part of the appeal. He's in a state of constant self-questioning, yet acting in ways that not only fulfill his desires, but contributes positively to the community. He's an analog for the balance everyone wants to find in their own lives, and there's something true to life about his experiences throughout the series. If you're into moral gray areas and awesome character pieces, Dexter is definitely down your alley. It's circumstantial vigilanteism, but come on, who doesn't enjoy watching someone do what they love without apologizing, even if it's murder? I'm the other socio, and I need to do something lighthearted. Rita, it's a paragon path. You know, follow the rules. Get along with everybody. Lila is the dark renegade path. Shoot everyone. Upstage is a reporter at her own game. Punch the reporter. Saren shoots himself. You shoot Saren. Kill the Reapers. Control the Reapers. This got out of hand. I'm having too much fun with these Mass Effect metaphors. <laughs> <laughs>